OK, so let's have a look at the cervical vertebra. And there are seven cervical vertebra. But what we're going to look at are the features of a typical cervical vertebra. OK, so we're looking at, sorry. OK, so we're looking at the cervical vertebra. Okay, uh, we know that there are seven of them, and the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth are all typical cervical vertebra. So if we have a look now, we know this is T1 because it has a rib attached to it. So this must be C7, C6, C5, C4, and C3 is here behind the hyoid bone. OK, so we know that the third, fourth, fifth and sixth are all typical cervical vertebrae. OK, so let's have a look at the features then of these typical cervical vertebrae. And for example, we'll choose C6 here. OK, so we're going to choose this C6 that we can see here. So let's think about the body of the cervical vertebra first. So it's body. So the body of, the, of a typical cervical vertebra is oval in shape. And it has its long axis transversely. OK, so the long axis of the body lies transversely. The height of the cervical vertebra is much more narrower in comparison to its width. The upper surface of the body is concave from side to side and the lower body is actually convex from side to side. Now the anterior border of the lower surface projects slightly downwards to form a lip. So this lower surface or the anterior surface of the lower aspect of the body forms a lip. So the anterior border of the lower surface projects slightly forward to form a lip. The posterior surface of the body is flattened where it forms part of the vertebral foramen. So let's have a look now at some of the features of the vertebral arch. Remember the vertebral arch, the pedicles, the lamina, and then the series of processes that arise from that. So if we clear the pen a moment and we say done and we just rotate. OK, and let's have a look. And let's sort of bring that into, into a line there. OK. And again, we're going to go back to, this is T1, there's our uh, rib, C7, and we were looking at C6 as a typical um, cervical vertebra. We've looked at the body, in a sense, and what we want to have a look at now is the vertebral arch. So we can see coming into play here the pedicles. OK, and we said these are two relatively thick chunks of bone which arise from the junction of the lateral and posterior aspect of the body itself. Now, in a cervical vertebra, in a typical cervical vertebra, the pedicles are small and short. And they project both backwards backwards 
and laterally. OK, so the pedicles are short, they're small and they project backwards and they project slightly laterally in their direction. Now, the lamina are long and narrow and project backwards and medially. So let's see if we can get a clearer view of the lamina. I think what we might have to do, actually, is look at the lamina um, on a separate individual view of the cervical spine. So all we can say at this point then is the pedicles of a typical cervical vertebra are small and short and they project backwards and laterally. The lamina are longer and narrower and project backwards and medially. So as a result, that um, arrangement of the pedicles pointing backwards and laterally and the lamina pointing backwards and medially, that results in a triangular shape of the um, vertebral foramen. Now, the superior and inferior surfaces of the pedicles are grooved to form the intervertebral notches, as we saw in a typical uh, vertebra. And the notch on the superior surface is deeper than the one on the inferior surface. Now, let's have a look at the transverse processes because these are quite uh, unusual. OK, so let's pick up the tools so we can say, here's our body. Here's our pedicle in here. OK, and here is our transverse process. OK. Now, the transverse processes, so here's another transverse process here. Here's the transverse processes. We're looking at the transverse process of six. There's five there. The transverse processes are short and are formed from an anterior root, which arises from the side of the body of the vertebra, and a posterior root, which arises from the junction of the pedicles and the lamina. OK, so here's the anterior root of the transverse process, and that arises from the side of the body. And here's the posterior root and that arises from the junction of the pedicles and the lamina. And those two processes um, or roots join together, those two um, uh, roots join together and they form this circle. They form around a circle. OK, and that is known as the transverse foramen. OK, so we've got this anterior root of the transverse process, the posterior root. They fuse together and they fuse around a transverse foramen. And that transverse foramen transmits the vertebral artery. Now, the end of the transverse process ends in two blunt projections, OK? So we can maybe see them quite clearly um, here and here. I've scribbled over that one there, but here and here. The transverse process ends in two little projections known as the anterior and the posterior tubercles. Now, let's have a look at the spinous processes and see if we can rotate the... Oh, sorry. Clear that. Done. OK, so we can see the spinous process. And again, let's just bring ourselves into alignment so we know where we are. T1, 
C7, C6. Okay. The spinous processes um, is relatively short and projects backwards and slightly downwards. And remember, the spinous process arises where the lamina fuse together. So this is the spinous process, okay? And this would then be the lamina, or part of the lamina. And there would be one on the opposite side. They join together and form this spinous process, which is projecting downwards, uh, backwards and slightly downwards. Now, we can see the superior articular facet there, and we can see the inferior articular facet. So the facet, the articular surface, which is carried on the superior, superior and inferior articular process. And they arise from the junction of the pedicles and the lamina. The inferior articular facet faces downwards and forwards. So the facet here is facing in that direction. The superior articular facet, which is here, faces upwards and slightly backwards. And that's the arrangement of the articular facets. So the articular processes form a pillar of bone which arises at the junction of the pedicles and the lamina. The inferior articular facet faces downwards and forwards and the superior articular facet faces upwards and backwards. And those are the features of a general or typical cervical vertebra.